In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is all the latest news in the UK, but in 60 seconds. This is absolutely groundbreaking in news this week that we could genuinely have proof that there is life on another planet. Basically, the James Webb Telescope is now investigating this planet because it looks like it could actually have life on it right now. One of the main reasons being it has a gas, dimethyl sulfoxide, which is exclusively produced by life forms on Earth. Of course, this isn't the UK, but UK scientists have been working on it with NASA, and they still are. TikTok is launching a new app in the UK, which is going to pay you to scroll on it and watch videos. I'm not joking. This app is already available in some places in Asia and it's going to be coming to the EU and so the UK very, very shortly. But it won't be releasing in America because of all the bans and stuff. So they're like, yeah, we don't want to sell, but we're just, you know, pay you to watch videos in the EU. It's been on the news every day the last week that they are now trying to ban best friends in school. I'm not even joking, look it up. Some primary schools are already trialling a no best friends policy to try and get kids playing in large groups so no one feels left out. But yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Now, I'm sure there's going to be some more crazier stuff coming this week, so make sure you have me, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Man, the UK's... Hello. Get into focus. Better. Man, the UK is really onto some things. The whole no friend in school, that's kind of ridiculous. Just because they want all the kids to formulate and play together... I get the concept, it's to keep everyone from feeling alone, but I mean, kids should have a best friend. They shouldn't always be involved with everyone. And I don't know, I don't know how the whole scrolling and getting paid to watch videos on TikTok will work. I'm not 100% sure that's going to be interesting, especially for people that do that for like a living or they just really enjoy it. They're just going to easily be able to make money as if they were doing nothing but what they like doing in the first place. That's pretty interesting. And I don't know about there being life on another planet. I, I have a hard time believing anything NASA says. Not saying that the scientists that are working with NASA are lying. It could just be that NASA's feeding the scientists a bunch of lies, you know? But all pretty interesting news facts. Let me know what you guys think. Does any of this affect you in the UK? Are you from the UK? Let me know in the comments. In the early 1900s, women were poisoned by one company, and it's never really talked about. The U.S. radium company made the equivalent of glow-in-the-dark dials for watches, and they had three plants, one in New Jersey, one in Illinois, and one in Connecticut. They were paid a penny for every dial that they completed, and the average woman came home with $3.75 a day. But the brushes that they used would often flatten out. Management in the factories encouraged the women to lick the tip of the brush in order to make a more defined point, but they were putting radiation directly into their bodies. Radium is extremely toxic and harmful to the human body if it's consumed. Slowly, women started getting sick and dying, and others became permanently deformed. One of the most famous images is this one, a woman who worked at one of the factories who got radium jaw. She ended up dying shortly after, after radium got into her jugular vein, burst it, and she ended up choking on her blood in her sleep. This fire ended up suing the U.S. radium company, and it took her two years just to find a lawyer that would take the case. She eventually died at the age of 34, but it was a class action lawsuit, and after years of litigation in 1939, they eventually won. It's considered a case that spearheaded workers' safety rights. The radium girls and how they're licking paintbrushes the entire time and painting clocks and doing things like that. So if we think about that story, it doesn't make a lot of sense to lick paint all the time. But it's interesting because one of the radium girls lived to 107. You have baseline glass, which is uranium glass. And you have copper, which is the copper pipes that everybody used to have in their house. So when you think about these two things going into the system, one is bringing back life, which is baseline glass, and bringing back the radiation of the body. And then you have copper, which is bringing back the electrical conductivity of the water. This is why everybody used to have copper pipes, even why Zuckerberg has copper pipes. What you put your water in will take on an imprint of whatever it may be, copper being one, Baseline being another. If you think about alchemy and you think about how somebody imprinted a material into this glass, it really starts to make you think about how you could take something, put it into this glass, and every time you sip it, you would be sipping uranium. But the first time I drank out of this, it was wild. It's very, um, it's very energizing. It feels like I'm, like I've been sitting out in the sun, which I have. I've been sitting out in the sun a lot, but it feels even more energizing with the sun. And I actually charge this water with the sun too. Yesterday I played a video about uranium and if it was safe to drink from, from this guy actually, 
And just seeing the uranium girls, it doesn't seem like a very safe history. I get that it's encased in glass, but it still seems to be kind of hazardous to me. I, I think that I'll avoid it. And eventually this guy right here that keeps drinking out of that glass, he's a pretty good test dummy for this. If what he is drinking out is actually what he says it is. But for me, I'm going to stay away from uranium. Maybe stick with copper. You have a very fascinating hypothesis or theory as to what the pyramid actually was. What I thought it was in 1998, which was a power plant, I describe it as a, an electron harvester. If you look at the details, the facts of their design and what the ancient Egyptians were doing, the northern shaft has an appearance that is similar to a waveguide. You need microwaves to go through a waveguide. What frequency of microwave was it? You look at the dimensions and you come up with a match for hydrogen. But it doesn't come in as hydrogen. There are two chemicals that are introduced into the chamber. The chemicals mix and they boil up hydrogen. So if we want to collect energy that is in a gaseous medium and the electrons in the hydrogen are pumped up to a high energy state, introduce a microwave signal, direct it through that gas, and stimulate the emission of the energy, collect that energy, and shoot it up the southern shaft. These are the symptoms that I had that I did not realize were related to high levels of mold toxicity in my system. And yes, I am working with a functional medicine practitioner. They did have me tested for this to appropriately diagnose me. So when you are continuously exposed to mold, and sometimes it can be sneaky and hide in things like carpets and behind walls, and you never know it's there. But when you are exposed to it on a continual basis, it basically fatigues your immune system and causes high histamine levels. And some of the symptoms that I experienced were fatigue, brain fog, skin issues. I have always had these little bumps all over my back that you could hardly ever see. Unless you were like to feel my back, you would know they're there. Um, but and once I've started doing the mold protocol that they put me on, those bumps have started going away. But it can also manifest as like eczema and things like that. Also respiratory issues, asthma, digestive issues. And also one of the ways that my mold toxicity and histamine symptoms manifested was through my bladder. So I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis in my mid-20s, um, which basically just means painful bladder syndrome. It wasn't related to any type of UTI or anything like that. But my functional doctor believes that those symptoms were related to this mold toxicity, which makes sense because since I've been on this protocol and have started detoxing and eating low histamine and being on supplements that help with histamine levels, I'm starting to feel so much better. Yes, what we eat matters, what we supplement with matters, but sometimes you have to get to the root cause to figure out what's causing your problems. I know when I'm around mold because I can feel it in my throat. I start getting really itchy and scratchy and it just makes me kind of cough a lot. And I can tell by how my sinuses burn when I'm breathing in. It really affects my system badly. I'm really curious as to what the protocol is. So if anyone out there knows a protocol to fix this mold toxicity, let me know in the comments because I'm going to stay up to date on this channel just to see if there is any resolve because this video was only posted a day ago. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed to the channel. And to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories, or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can find it in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. Something's not right, ladies and gentlemen. Something is not right. I'm about to show you guys something that just doesn't sit well with me. Wait till the end because it's going to blow your mind, guys. You know how they say that everything we eat is fake? Like fake meat, fake freaking fruit, fake everything, right? Dude, I'm about to show you guys that's 100% true. Yesterday, I get a watermelon, right? I dice it up and I leave it overnight because I'm going to take it in the morning. That's what I'm going to eat in the morning, right? Whatever. I eat it and I leave four pieces and I come to work and like I just leave it sitting on the table, right? All day. When I come back from work, it looks exactly the same, dude. It's just been out, right? Not only that, before I leave, there's like a tree, right? There's a little pot, like a tree, like a big old thing right outside of the door. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to leave it for the birds. I'm going to leave this watermelon for the birds because there's hella birds here, you know? What I'm about to show you guys is going to blow your mind and you guys need to you guys need to tell me what's good. What do you guys think about this shit? This is wild. Watch. I'm walking over to it right now. Keep in mind, 
I threw this out. It was there all day, all night. And the crazy part, it's untouched. Not the ants, not the bugs, not the birds. And it looks the same. Bro, look at this. Look at this. Untouched, bro. Why is water... I, I thought water... Dude, if I was a bird, I would eat this up already. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? Not touched by the bugs, ants, beetles, worms, anything. Or the birds, like... What is this? It's funny this video comes up because the other day I had a commenter say that they had a watermelon they were craving, and it was kind of similar to this. And yeah, that's pretty wild. I've had similar experiences, but not like that. If he threw that watermelon out for a day, and he came back and it wasn't touched at all, and also watermelon dissolves really fast. If you leave it out, it will melt away and turn into nothing really quickly and that just looked like it was freshly cut i don't know something's going on with fruit and vegetables i highly recommend not buying one from a store maybe if you can find people on the side of the road that are doing wholesales on their watermelon different fruits and vegetables that might be the best place to get your stuff because whatever we're buying from the stores are just not good nasa please i am begging you put these ignorant flurfs to bed why don't you just zoom in and show them one person there and then one person down here? I mean, come on, you're clearly up high enough to see curvature. So just take your zoom lenses and zoom in on someone in Canada standing right side up and then zoom in on someone down here in South America upside down. That's it. I mean, it's really just a simple NASA. Just zoom in on R2 up here in the North Pole and then zoom out and then zoom in on Mr. Skywalker here down in Antarctica, case solved. You prove your legitimacy. You prove to all these flurfs that the money you are getting, the $70 million a day, is going towards beautiful things. I mean, I think the flurfs would even pipe down if you would just show them R2 upright and then Mr. Skywalker sideways. That's all you need. Just sideways would work. Sideways. I just don't understand. Legitimize yourself, NASA. Do it. People are doubting you. Prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. I know you're good. You're good, NASA. I love you. And if you guys just can't get enough of NASA's videos, there's a whole lot of them here at this app. You can go to that website and get it. Order the app store and use my code. You can even find NASA's rockets that look like helium balloons. All for entertainment purposes, of course. A family was just filming their young son. He was talking... You know, just a normal family thing to do with our kids. But it's what he says and how he keeps looking over his shoulder that has everybody questioning, what is he seeing? And what does his dad have to do with this ghost? But pay close attention to the end, because at the end, it seems like he tells this thing, don't, as he looks over his shoulder. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Where's your elbow? <laughs> Look here, that's your elbow. Elbow? <laughs> this is my elbow. <laughs> Where? Where is... <laughs> Where the ghost? Ghost? Yeah. Did I kill him? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't rock. You'll break. I ain't breaking. Break. <laughs> this sleek 1969 Moon Rover comes quick, efficient, equipped with your own lawn furniture. Duct tape. Option. No, forget your ashen packed. Mickey Thompson sticks in the rear with dune buggy cups. Not to mention state the art. Second to only backwards hibbity antennas with tennis balls. In a handy analog. Radar buster. And the always much a sought after front end. With an indestructible polypropagnal design. Fit for king. Umbrella inverted is extra. Thirty-eight million in nineteen sixty-nine. Today,
Man, that's so crazy. If it really costs that much to make that, I don't know the engineering and the science that goes behind that vehicle, but is it really that much money worth? I don't believe that. That was a scheme if I've ever seen one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that that's genuine? Or do you think that there's some fishy business going on there? And it also kind of comes from NASA, so you know that it's already got a bad rep. Why, well, I think another thing that it's important to say that if you're saying that radiation is dangerous to instrumentation, and it's going to be dangerous to bodies. But even if you, but I'm saying, even if you don't say that, yeah, he did say people before you could send people, but he could, you could say, imply, I'm not saying this is true, but by what he's saying, that what he's saying is that instrumentation would be damaged and that would be dangerous. Well, and he also included people before we send people through this rig, right? Plus, but it could be because they would lose their instrumentation. You could interpret that. I'm just trying to be as generous as possible. You're overly generous. Okay, here it is. My name is Kelly Smith, and I work on navigation guidance for Orion. Before we can send astronauts in space on Orion, we have to test all the systems. Only one way to know if we got it right, fly it into space. For Orion's first flight, no astronauts will be aboard. The spacecraft is loaded with sensors to record and measure all aspects of the flight in every detail. We're headed 3,600 miles above Earth, 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belt an danger an area of dangerous radiation radiation like this can harm the guidance systems on board computers or other electronics on Orion naturally we have to pass through this danger zone twice once up and once back but Orion has protection shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study we must solve these challenges before before we send people through this region of space so the challenges have not been solved in 2014? So how could they have been solved in 1960? The thing is, even if they did solve it back then, what, how did they do it? This is the question. So this is what we know about the spaceship, what we know about the Apollo 11, what we know about the shielding that it had. They had one eighth of an inch of aluminum. Now when you get a, a dental x-ray, they use one quarter inch lead. And so that's for one twenty-fourth of a second. They would be in that for an hour to an hour and a half going to the moon and an hour to an hour and a half coming back. So okay, what would that be the equivalent to roughly in terms of like x-rays? It would be 100 times more than a lethal dose, according to their own reports, which are documented at sabrell.gov. All for free, you go on there and watch the videos and read the documentation. Okay, and to be clear, and to be clear, how many people have gone through that, supposedly? Well, who was the first ones? The first one, they, there was an orbit of the moon, a manned orbit of the moon before there was a land. Yeah, there were allegedly 24 people who have allegedly gone through it to the moon and back, but the footage we uncovered shows them faking being halfway to the moon from Earth orbit. So it proves that they could not even go halfway to the moon because they're faking being halfway to the moon. Well, whatever that footage was, though, in all fairness, that footage wasn't released. Right. That footage was found footage, correct? That was outtakes of them faking being halfway to the moon, which even my greatest critic agrees that is them faking being halfway to the moon. And they're doing it from Earth orbit, and it's dated two days into the flight. Yeah, we'll show the video, but if I was going to steel man it, what I would say is, if I'm training these guys to film things, and they're training all day long to do a bunch of different things, one of the things I would do is to train them how to film the Earth from the moon. And to stimulate that, or to simulate that, I would say what you can do is black out all the light when you're in low Earth orbit, focus on one of those circular windows, put the transparency or whatever it is in front of the window, and practice that way. Except it's dated two days and three days into the flight when they're supposed to be halfway to the moon. Damn, my steel man's not working. It's the people today that are in the scientific community that believe the moon landing's real. So you have to approach it from the perspective of how they're going to debunk your debunk. Let's look at the footage first, because I think we're just, we're beating around the bush. The footage is so shocking that you immediately go, okay, what is this? Like, what is this? I just want to know what, what logically could this be? The only thing that I could think of that was logically would be that they're practicing. Oh, this so this is one when you compare back and forth, right? Correct. I mean, there's there's more. Well, isn't there one of just the actual video that we can watch? Well, there you could go to 
usabrell.com click on a funny thing happened on the way to the moon or go to the moon man video links at sabrell.com and pull this up smoking gun i just gave you the time cues on the most significant part where you could do the side-by-side -side comparison and the side-by-side -side comparison is for well on the left neil armstrong claims this is 130,000 miles out he claims that the camera lens is at the glass and that's the earth floating in space which on the right hand side are the outtakes that we got an unedited reel of the special effects shot by accident and the lights come up and you see okay so this is the exact same sh size image so roughly the same distance so i really uh on the left he claims that this is the part they showed to the public that that's the earth floating in space halfway to the moon looking back and then on the right is the outtakes where the lights come up and you see that the camera is really at the back of the spacecraft and that's part of the earth outside of a circular window with a little crescent piece molded in front of it and that's the take on the left hand side you're about to see michael collins break down part of the uh so this is a way to look fat. This is what I want everybody to hear. Because this is where... Okay, hold on a second. This is where it gets really weird. So they're saying they're 130,000 miles away. So they're in deep space. So that proves it's the window. You see that? We used to think that we're looking out into space at the Earth. But now we realize there's people standing in front of it. So there's other stuff going on. So something out... There's... The, there's you're filming a room. And then that's literally the window. That's an... It's a window. Yeah, that's an arm getting in front of the window. That's an how take they never showed because it shows that it's a fake shot. Okay, but do you think that that is just a piece of the earth in a circular window? Why well, I may mean, you think they put something over the window that represent the earth? Uh, another photographer believes it's part, it's like a transparency of the, there's a circular one. Well, there's play out. Let's let this play out. So if this, see the window, the point is it's the window. Okay, back it up a little bit. Are you using the window to create a one foot model of the earth? But then they're using the darkness of the cabin by blocking out all the windows and at least it looks like it's space. Exactly. It makes it look like the earth is floating in space. So we have them faking being halfway to the moon, which means they cannot go halfway to the moon. And here we are 54 years later and they still cannot go halfway to the moon. That's why there's mannequins orbiting the moon. They said in 2014 in 2018 they would have people orbiting the moon they were 100 percent behind schedule yeah but that's politicians uh, they, they lie about everything and they may, might have had grand plans and didn't get the funding but this is shocking weird stuff because it's hard to explain it's hard to come up with a rational explanation of what this could be but we should play the audio so they ta and they say in the audio we're a hundred and thousand hundred and thirty thousand miles away right and then they also say it's crazy which is another lie that there's only one window that faces the earth and it's filled up with the tv camera meaning right the lens would have to be right up against the window to see that but the camera's really at the back of the spacecraft with all the lights off let's play that seeing part of the earth outside of the window it's very ingenious let's that is the first time i've ever heard of the conspiracy that it is actually a part of the earth made to look like the whole earth in a small little window that's pretty clever this was a pretty good podcast there's more out there but I can only play so much before YouTube says that they can't be played anymore. Hopefully on the next episode, there will be another part for us to watch. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I'm really sorry about the length of this video. I know it's a little short. I have a lot of things going on right now. And I just want to go ahead and let you know that there may not be any videos this weekend. Saturday and Sunday, I may not have any videos or even Monday. I got a lot of things that I need to do. So if I do not have any videos coming up this weekend, and I'm really sorry. I will have them back up Tuesday if I do not post this weekend. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting in today's video, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.